Hello everyone. Another of MTV's election awareness programs, Your Vote Matters. This is the papa of all political parties, Pangu, Papua New Guinea United, the oldest, the longest serving, formed and headed more governments than any other in our 47 year history. The incumbent going into the 2022 election for the 11th House, Pangu's parliamentary leader and prime minister, the Honorable James Marape, is our guest. Sir, thank you for coming on board. I uh, appreciate the opportunity, John. It's a pleasure for me to uh, be here as your guest. Thank you, thank you. Uh, prime Minister, I, uh, in my profession, I've talked to many prime ministers in my life, all the seven of them. You are the eighth. I've asked them many questions uh, about issues in this country, but I've never asked them this, and I want to ask you this. How do you feel becoming prime minister? Is it, is it any different? Is it any different to how you were before? Does it make you talk different, eat different, walk different? What difference? What is there, if any, the difference of being a prime minister than an ordinary member of parliament? Uh, thank, thank you, John, once again. But uh, you know, your question uh, out of the blue for me, my answer is simple. Uh, it's the most burdensome responsibility. Okay. Uh, when I uh, work and for me I work almost 18 hours a day except on Sabbath hours. Uh, every child in this country, every person in this country, every woman in this country, every man in this country is my responsibility. And uh, for me I don't see any different. It hasn't changed my personal ego or uh, my life. I still run around normal but I carry the huge burden and it's quite, quite, quite stressful. Yes. Uh, I've grown more white hair in the last three years than I've ever grown in my entire life. I think I've lost more ha hair in the last three years because the buck stops with you. Sure. Uh, every decision you make uh, has an influence for the better or for the worse for our citizens. And so it's quite stressful, burdensome, because every citizen in this country is your responsibility. Your head. Uh, I don't know, John, you, you would, and the people would assess me in the last three years. Uh, I try my very best to keep to the ground. Uh, coming from a rural PNG background, uh, rising up from the simple man's lifestyle uh, with no money, not too many clothes, never own a car in a family car. Okay. And so I haven't lost touch with my roots. And so I feel a big pressure on me that I must deliver for the better. Okay. Okay. And I've set the highest benchmark any Prime Minister would set for his country for us to be the richest black Christian nation. That dream, many think, is not achievable. But today I came back from Manus to see Manus feeling liberated, a, a brand new uh, terminal. Uh, involvement and rolling out of you know, fish and buying fish from the people who are fishermen out there. Okay, well, let, well I'm gonna get on to Manus and uh, uh, making Papua New Guinea the black richest country a little later on in the program. But I just wanna know about you. You're the member for Tari Pori in the national parliament. Correct. They think that you come from Tarib. That's where you grew up, that's where you were born. Were you born there? Did you spend the rest of your life there? Or have you been, have you been raised elsewhere in Papua New Guinea? Yeah, I'm a uh, people need to know that. I think it's good that uh, they need to know about the history of their leader. Yeah, I'm a missionary's kid and uh, a child. Uh, I spent the first seven years of my life in uh, Western Province, in the remotest part of Western Province. Uh, bordering uh, West Papua, Indonesia, and and uh, and PNG places like Also Bib, uh, Nigurum, uh, Nomad River, some places where most in Port Mosby do not know about. Okay. The next three years was spent in a place called Oxamin. Uh, that's where I did my grade one, uh, one and two. So Oxamin on the other side, places like uh, Sisimin, Tekin, Oxamin. That's why today, you know, we're running road from Tabubil into Telefomin, some of the remotest area. We're running road from Kundiawa into Karamui, or Wabek into Maramuni, some of the remotest area, because I'm a child of those remote places. Yeah, it's coming from the heart, yeah. it's coming and, from the heart. And, uh, we also, uh, I did my grade three in Kandep. We moved to Kandep. Uh, grade four in a remotest place in the Obura Wananara electorate. Uh, grade five and six in Minsk, uh, Minsk Primary School in, well, in Jiwaka, the West, a Western bit, Islands. Yeah. Uh, grade 7 and 8 in Mulbaya in Western Islands Province. 
uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 in uh, Kabifa in Eastern Highlands Province. Uh, uh, and coming to UPNG after high school or secondary school, uh, mixing around with the rest of PNG uh, students from all over PNG and UPNG gave me a contemporary multi-cultural uh, outlook in the way PNG should be. Okay. So that's my background in a quick snapshot. Uh, all right, all right. Rural PNG boy coming to Port Moresby, UPNG, mixing around with the rest of PNG, and here and I am. And then going back to Tari to yeah. win the election yeah. when you're Normally, you would have to be with the people to win the election. So, uh, what happened? What you press some button that no, after, we should know about? After UPNG in 1993, I, I left aside rugby league and left aside all the pomp and life of Port Mosby, and I went and lived in the village for almost 10 years, okay. Okay. and then contested 2002. All right. So, yeah. Then you become a member of parliament, then you become a minister, and uh, you become leader of government business, uh, several portfolios, and then the ultimate. As, as Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea. Okay, you've been there three years, or so just a little three years more. Give us your experience in those three years. What do you think has been the, uh, the main issue that you've addressed, the main achievement that you will have achieved? Uh, that we're going into the elections now. And what do you think are the failures? Just go through those a few minutes. Yeah, well, John, we took office at the backdrop of uh, discontentment, uh, dissatisfaction from the society, uh, community at large thought the country was not managed properly. Uh, myself having stayed uh, in ministerial portfolio, especially at finance, right under then Prime Minister O'Neill for eight years. And in those eight years, we offer advices. Uh, we offer advices for and against on key policy matters and key decisions of country. But once the cabinet takes a decision, then it becomes a collective decision. Right. But we have the privilege to advise for and against uh, key decisions uh, with the Prime Minister, with ministers who are bringing the submissions inside. So in the eight years of consistent advice on certain matters, especially for me, my special forte is PNG first, people empowerment, local content, getting more from our resources. Uh, those are line of advices that I was offering as uh, senior minister since 2012. But you would know when I resigned on April 11, 2019, it's on record. My statement was that the Prime Minister does not hear advices that we give him. And so it's better him working with others who feel that they could subscribe to his way of thinking. My way of thinking is consistently different. It took you eight years or so in Cabinet to work that out. I mean, was the advice that he wasn't listening, you could have resigned a little earlier than that time? Well, I gave him the benefit of doubt. Okay. Every, every human being has a propensity to do good. So. We gave him the benefit of doubt. The first term, you know, I've, I've also grown and uh, after university, I've understood that this country is littered with many experiences of short-term government. Political instability has a negative consequence to productivity in our country. Yes. yes. Before Mekere's law in 2000, where he brought the organic law on political parties and, and candidates, that gave stability to the then National Alliance government from 2002 to 2011 when the government was hijacked. Uh, life before 2000 was a life where the average life of government was 18 months since 1975. Uh, Pius Wingti would, would have done very good job for the country had he lived through life in one full term or two terms. Uh, St. Julius likewise, two good leaders, Somare likewise. Uh, Robin Amari likewise, but we were changing prime ministers uh, almost after 80, every 18 months. So for me, uh, being quite exposed to this statistics and reality from 2012 to 17, I gave Mr. O'Neill a full benefit of doubt. You saved our country and we, and I was leader of government business, I held the numbers together. I held numbers for him. And I said, you save full five years and do it right for the country. When he came to Tari for my campaign in 2017, I put to him at public rally, if you don't correct some of your inherent weaknesses I know of, I will resign in 2019. I told him 18 months before I resigned. A holy man don't go to war or battle without telling you what your faults are or your problems are. Yes, yes. So for five years I gave him the benefit of doubt. Others moved on, but I gave him the benefit of doubt, we hanged around, tried to advise him. We came back, gave him the numbers to form government. 
but the greater propensity of his heart moved elsewhere, not in the national interest, but on personal interest. Okay. And so I had to make my mark and resign in 2019. The rest is history now, I suppose, but one of the things you did, when you did resign and move out, um, and you felt that uh, uh, O'Neill, or the government at the time, did wrong with uh, the loan with the UBS, of course, it's all history now, too. We've had the inquiry, and the inquiry has found certain mistakes in how we negotiated and dealt with this. The rest is all history now, and I don't want us to waste any more time talking about this, but the report does recommend how, uh, how we redress, how we get things back, how we get it back again. And it recommends uh, certain measures against leaders who are implicated here to be taken into account. And, of course, the overseas components should also be dealt with. Will we see light of the day, uh, with, uh, given the background that so many inquiries have been held and we've seen nothing come of it? Uh, John, it's a, it's a very serious uh, uh, inquiry that we've opened up. Uh, for me, as part of my generation of leaders, uh, leaders we felt it is obliga obligation on our part to inquire into some decisions we felt cost this country a lot of money. Uh, you would know and recollect some 20 or so years back, we had the Cayman Island saga and many things. And in between, there have been many inquiries, but nothing has surfaced. Uh, John, we owe it to the future of this country that this sort of inquiry is probably the recommendations of follow through. And I've made it no secret. It's not just targeting one politician or a couple of politicians or players domestically. Of course, those tracks will be running its own course. Police will pick up the report.